Hey, today we are going to talk about Databricks apps and I have two awesome essays, Pascal and Antonio. Hey guys. Hey, you Serge. Great to meet you. Hey, Seb. So can you introduce maybe yourself? Uh, let's start first with Pascal. Perfect, yeah. Uh, so thanks for inviting us. My name is Pascal. I'm a solutions architect uh, based in Hamburg in Germany. And yeah, I work with some of our logistics customers here and help them to be successful on Databricks, hopefully. And yeah, I joined Databricks last year and my background is around like uh, cloud infrastructure, web applications. So I'm yeah, really excited that we can also host these types of applications on Databricks. And yeah, happy to talk about this today. And what about you, Antonio? Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Pascal. So my name is Antonio. I'm also a Databricks solutions architect. And I also come from a, a cloud infrastructure background and worked at AWS before. And uh, I've been in Databricks uh, for a few months now and Databricks. Amazing. So let's suppose I am new, completely new to Databricks. Can you uh, define uh, what's a Databricks app and maybe what are the, an example of use cases where I can benefit from this feature? Yeah, for sure. So Maybe in general, I would say Databricks apps, it's kind of a new way to host web applications in Databricks apps focused on, for now, Python-based web applications. And we always talk about these like data and AI applications that you can host in Databricks apps, uh, which basically means anything where users interact with the data you have in Databricks, like tables or volumes and so on, uh, but also AI models, large language models and so on. Uh, apps is basically the place where you can build the UI for all of these interactions. Um, yeah, maybe that's the, the quick summary. That's interesting. Um, how can I get started quickly with Databricks apps? Uh, do we have any template and maybe what are the frameworks that are currently supported? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the quickest way to get started is just, is just to go into the like Databricks UI. And then when you go to compute apps, create an app, and there we have a couple of templates integrated into the product, basically, where you can I deploy like a simple app that reads data from a data table or a chatbot app. Uh, we have some templates that you can use that um, are built on these popular frameworks like Dash or Streamlit or Gradio. And when you ask about like what frameworks are supported, uh, in principle, we support any like Python based application that you can build. So it can be one of these uh, full stack frameworks, so to say, like Dash or Streamlit. But it can also be any Python backend that you write, like Fast API or something like that, and then your own HTML front end, React front end. So there's really a lot of like liberty around how you build your app and we just deploy it for you. And can you maybe show us an example? Yeah, absolutely. So let me just quickly share my screen here. Let me know once you're able to see it. Yeah, yes. all good. All good. Cool. So now we are in the Databricks uh, workspace console. And if we go here towards the compute section, and then here towards the apps section within compute, then it is just as simple as clicking on create app right here on the, on the right. And then here we have a couple of options on how to create our new app. And the first one is to go and take one of the templates that are already built and uh, provided by us on Databricks. As you can see here, and also as Pascal was mentioning before, there are different uh, frameworks that we can use out of the box. For example, let's say that we want to use Dash and for, to create a chatbot um, so that we can interact with our data on Databricks uh, using natural language. So this is something that we can do by clicking here. And then next, then we can just give it a name. Let's say chatbot test up. We can also give it a description. And then here, uh, here's where we're, we actually define what the app can access. And there are a couple of things that we can tweak. There are also, this is actually part of the advanced settings. So you can just leave it as such uh, without tweaking anything and just create an install app. Um, and then if we go back, we also have the option to create our own custom application. And so here, if we create, uh, click on next, we can give it a name as well. So for example, test app custom. Um, this is a test description. And then here under advanced settings, um, we can add the different resources that the app can, can access. So if you're familiar with Databricks, uh, you probably have used some of the features that we already offer, like such as uh, Databricks uh, workflows, uh, jobs, uh, SQL warehouses. So these things are here available for the app to access. And then we can also tweak other, other settings, uh, such as permissions, um, and, and also control what the app can access and in which way it can access it. So here is just the way to create the app. Um, I'm just going to go back and do it with a template, with a chatbot. 
and I'm just going to click on install app. Oh, you should select an endpoint. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's say that I, I select, the, for example, this one for the uh, serving endpoint. I'm going to click on install app. And then it's just going to take uh, uh, some time for the compute to start. Um, and then, as you can see, I already can see a lot of things here in the screen. So for example, um, I can see where the deployment uh, source is located. I can also see the app resources that are, are going to be deployed. Uh, so for example, here I can see that this app is going to be able to use a serving endpoint uh, to be queried. And then here, there's also the option to tweak this in your own uh, IDE. So if you're used to some specific development environment, uh, you can integrate with your Databricks uh, apps as well in order to to still have that developer experience that you're used to using. So at the end of the day, it's just as simple as that. Uh, then from here, we can do a lot of things. We can uh, tweak the app. Uh, we can uh, also uh, play around with the permissions. But at the end of the day, in order to get started, uh, this is pretty much all, all you need. I think it's it's uh, very straightforward. And I think, Pascal, you worked on a cookbook where people can deploy apps uh, quickly some very very good examples can you can you show us what you cooked yeah for sure so uh, when you start building out uh, your first app you will have questions like I don't know, how, what's the best practice to read from a delta table what's the best practice to upload a file or let users upload a file in my app and for exactly these typical use cases, we built a repository of samples that you can just go to and copy paste um, code snippets. And you can also try out all of these uh, code snippets. Uh, so let me also show this briefly here. Um, so in this case, I have already deployed uh, this cookbook app. I will show in a second how that works. Um, and once you deploy it, you have like access to a lot of interactive uh, samples for Databricks apps in your own workspace. Um, in principle, you can also run this locally. Of course, you don't have to uh, deploy it to a workspace. You can also run it locally and then connect kind of remotely to the Databricks resources. Um, and here you get like an impression of all of the recipes that we have available. Like I said, reading data from tables, from volumes, invoking models, how to embed a dashboard, how to talk to the Genie API, how to trigger a workflow or a job. Um, We've built a lot of recipes. We're also looking for more ideas, like tell us what you want to see as a sample, or you can even contribute your own in the GitHub repo. Um, and then, for example, if I want to read a table, um, I can go here to the sample, can select the DB demos uh, warehouse here, where I have authorized my application so that it has the appropriate permissions already. Um, I can set a, select a catalog. Uh, let's just go for samples. And then let's say... Bakehouse. So this should be in every Databricks workspace. You can just try this out. And then this just shows you how uh, the app can read some data from this sample table. And then if you want to implement this in your own app, you can just go to code snippet. You can copy paste this. And it's kind of a self-contained uh, sample that will work out of the box. And then not to forget the requirements. So you always have to give out some permissions because everything your app does goes through uh, Unity, Unity catalog permissions, right? That's why you have to give your app permissions on the table. You have to give it permissions on the SQL warehouse. Um, that's what we explain also here in this requirements section. And yeah, all kinds of other examples. Upload a file would work as you would imagine and work in a model. Uh, let's try our new, new cloud models here maybe. Um, we can select a lamp. We can tweak like the temperature here as an example. Um, and then we can just ask what is Databricks, for example, and then uh, we have here some very simple code that just um, yeah gets a response from the LLM. Um, and yeah, this, these cloud models should now be available in most Databricks workspaces uh, as paper token models. So you can get these uh, types of responses here. And here the same, you can copy the code snippet and look at the requirements and just get started really quickly. And so this is the interactive Databricks apps cookbook. That's one part of the story. Um, if you don't want to deploy the cookbook yourself. We also have a website. Um, if you just go to apps-cookbook.dev, um, you can also look at all of the samples, for example, for Streamlit um, in a, on a static website, basically. So you don't have to deploy them if you don't want to. Um, That's where we're also starting now to build like a repository of best practices for um, developing with Databricks apps, uh, for example, how to deploy them efficiently and so on. So yeah, so looking for information about around um, Databricks apps, a uh, good place to start is uh, besides our docs is apps-cookbook.dev. 
Um, maybe also to show how to install it. So if you want to try this out, um, you can, or if you go into website and you go on GitHub here, you will get to our repository, Databricks Apps Cookbook. And then you can just copy this um, repository URL. And in your Databricks workspace, you can import this as a Git folder. Um, so just put, put in the URL um, and we will get the latest version of the code from Git. Um, and then um, let me show you what it looks like. We'll just have it here as the cookbook, as a, as a Git folder. Um, and then when you have created a app resource, you can just pick that folder here when you click on deploy um, and then the cookbook will deploy automatically. So just pick the stream or dash sample and then it will start a deployment. So it's that easy. Um, so that's the cookbook in a nutshell. I love it. Like it's, 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 it makes things way easier because you like, you can select every component, copy the code and then build your app brick by brick by brick. So it's, it's really cool. I mean, especially for those who never used like Streamlit or Dash or uh, um, any of those frameworks, they can build their app quickly. They can like just I don't know, trigger workflow that's going to compute the KPI, then query those KPI, then maybe put them in a Genie or a dashboard and everything can be done, let's say, easily. So uh, you want to gonna find the links uh, on the description of this, uh, this, this video and also make sure if you have time to contribute uh, to, to the repo and maybe suggest your ideas. Everything is good. Anything else to add, Pascal, Antonio? I would say like, we're totally open to your feedback. Let us know what kind of samples for apps you're looking for. What guides do you need? Kind of blog posts that you're looking for. Uh, all of these questions, you can put them here in the comments or you can reach out to us directly. And yeah, uh, go build some cool stuff with apps. Uh, start with the cookbook and yeah, show us what you build. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So, um, just uh, following up on, on that, Pascal, I'm also very excited to see how customers and, and users are going to take this to the next level. Um, and also see, uh, to see how we can bridge that gap between uh, the, the technical and the, and the non-technical. And even for those more technical users, how you can use these apps and this uh, cookbook to, to enable those use cases uh, that really require that next level customization on, on the data consumption layer. So, so really excited for that. And, and yeah, thank you, Yusuf, for giving us the opportunity. To, to showcase it. Perfect. Thank you guys for your hard work and uh, see you soon. Absolutely. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thank you.